Executor? No, not yet. Man, okay. still looking too. I want to start today by showing you some tricks and shortcuts that you can use when navigating the Pokemon Go app to speed up your experience. This first one I've showed you guys before, but in case you missed it the first time, here it is again. When you're opening up menus, instead of tapping twice, you can just quickly swipe to the menu you want to open, and it'll go straight there. Works for all of them, even Pokedex. Here's one you might have noticed me doing in other videos. When you spin a Pokestop, you don't actually have to pop all the bubbles. As soon as the items come out, you can just hit the X, and you'll still get those items. This next one's great if you're playing with one hand. Instead of pinching to zoom, you can just double tap and slide on the map to zoom in and out. Slide down to zoom in, slide up to zoom out. Using potions to heal one Pokemon at a time can be pretty time consuming, but if you want to heal more than one Pokemon at once, all you have to do is tap on them at the same time. Sometimes it won't register all of them. Whoops. But you can definitely do a few at a time this way. If you want to discard a bunch of items at once, instead of just tapping as quick as you can, you can press and hold and it'll scroll through the numbers really quickly. I don't really want to throw away that many revives though. When you're scrolling through your Pokemon, sometimes it can take a long time to find what you're looking for. If you just grab the scroll bar and drag, you can scroll up and down super fast. When you're looking at a Pokemon summary screen, sometimes scrolling isn't the most responsive, but if you just tap to the left or the right of the Pokemon, it'll scroll through effortlessly. There's still a lot of shortcuts and features missing from Pokemon Go that would massively improve the user experience. Like, why can't I heal a Pokemon from its summary screen? There's already a menu button, just add an option to use potions on it to that menu. Or, why can't I view a Pokemon's stats when choosing which Pokemon to use in a gym? If I long press on a Pokemon while I'm selecting it, it should bring up its summary screen. But in the meantime, I hope those tricks and shortcuts help you out. Now let's get on to the rest of today's episode. Chance, where are we? Iowa Valley. Iowa? Or We're in Eow Valley. Oh, yeah, okay. There's actually a little bit of stuff going on here. My service is pretty bad, so things might take me a while to accomplish. I was hoping for more grass type Pokemon. I don't see any grass types on the list, but there is a Nidoran, and as you know, my Nidoking is terrible, so I need to get started on collecting those again. See how long this takes. All right, got it. That's one. Let's keep looking. First grass type just showed up on the sightings list. There's an oddish, but I'm also seeing a lot of water types and some of the more mountain biome Pokemon. So it seems like this is a combination of water grass and mountain and it makes sense because that's what it looks like what are the mountain pokemon Mankey is one some pretty big Snorlaxes, and my surface is kind of spotty up here, so let's see if I can get through it.
that you? Yep. Right on. The team are you on. Nice. in the gym. Now we need to go find this executor. Chance already has an executor. Yeah, I caught one wild when I was like level five. How lucky was I? But I need one, so let's go find it. I'm not sure where this executor is going to be. We're going to walk down towards the parking lot because I figure that's where most of the cell service, cell activity is going on. It's pretty much impossible to walk in a straight line here, so I'm not going to be able to track it effectively. Could try going down there. Let's do it. Let's let's walk through there. All right. No, I don't think it's down here. We're gonna head back up to the parking lot. I'm starting to get a little nervous. It's been a while. And it doesn't help that my GPS isn't totally accurate. I mean, you can see we're walking right down the path here and we're a little ways off to the side on the map. One, two, three. Oh, I just lost 30 seconds taking a picture for that family. But, can't say no to that. Oh, it's gone. It's gone, Chance. Now, is it really gone? Let's start walking back, see if it reappears. I'm not going to have good IVs. Although, I, yeah, you're probably right. And after all the work I've put into trying to get an execute with good IVs, mm -hmm. oh, it is back on the map. Okay, so it's this way. It's somewhere this way. Continue, Nick. Let's see. Are you not looking for the executor? Oh. It's somewhere this way. So I'm going down there. I haven't gone down there. I yet. don't get service all the way down there. Well, then I'm going to go catch it. Yeah, T-Mobile. What do you think of that? Uh, you know what? Don't even. All right. This is the last officially designated walking trail that we can take to try to find this executor. If it doesn't show up, we might have to go off-road. But I don't think it's going to be too far off of a path. Find that executor? No, not yet. Man, still looking too. No service. Uh oh. Man's was right. We're in a dead zone. Let's see if we can walk through it. It's not looking good for me in this executor. Oh man, someone just took my gym down. Oh well. Heading out for a little walk on the beach to enjoy the sunset. Try to get some distance on these eggs now.
losing light. I want to get this done quick. It was nice out here. Check it out. Fire. It's just part of the sugarcane harvesting process. They always burn it before they harvest. I don't remember why, but I guess it makes it easier. Nothing to be alarmed about. Anyway, I'm here at my turnaround point, this little wharf gym. Just waiting for the distance on my eggs to update, and then I'm gonna turn around and head back. Perfect. Three kilometers on the dot. Now these will all hatch at exactly the same time. All right, two kilometers back to the condo. Let's make it happen. Okay, it's dark, I know that. You might not be able to see me, but... Snorlax. There's a Snorlax nearby. I definitely have to track this down. Luckily, I'm walking in a straight line. It just appeared here. I'm gonna remember that point. Walk this way. I hope I don't have to go too far that way, across the street. But I would really like to catch this right now. Hopefully, the Snorlax is down this way. I really hope it's not out at sea, because that would, well, it wouldn't work. I lost him. Eradicate here. But if he's not down this street, he might be over there somewhere. Maybe this way. He's back on the list, so he must be somewhere out here. Maybe down the street a little further? Let's see, I'm gonna walk up to the next street. Can I cut through there? I'm gonna cut through here. Polywagon Squirtle just showed up on the beach. Definitely wanna catch both of those, but I can't spend too much time on it. Polywag's still on my list. Snorlax is not. Going back this way. Snorlax, please. Maybe he is up here somewhere. Oh, this is stressing me out. He's back on the list. I gotta keep moving this way. I'm gonna check down around these loops. I don't know, he disappeared when I was on the beach here. If this Snorlax is out in the ocean, and this is some kind of sick joke, Niantic, I'm not happy about it. Although if it were happening to someone else, I can see how it would be kind of funny. There he is. There he is. I'm gonna click on him now before it's too late. Snorlax. 1288 CP. You know what my biggest complaint with this game is? For all the things that Niantic has done wrong with it, my biggest complaint, Snorlax should not be jumping. This dude's jumping right now. He's jumping as his attack animation. There's no way you could convince me that a Snorlax could be jumping every half second to use Lick. But there it is, my jumping Snorlax, Zen Headbutt Hyper Beam. Yes, I'm happy with this Snorlax. Very, very happy. Now, let's finish hatching these eggs. I'm sweating. I'm actually sweating, you guys. Accidentally started them. Um, I'm gonna stop right here in the light for this. But this is nine eggs, seven five kilometer eggs, two two kilometer eggs. And I picked all of these up during the full moon when I was out at Malaya Harbor. So I'm interested to see what hatches from them. First one's a Nidoran, that's cool. It's gonna have decent IVs. And I'm already almost halfway, not almost halfway. I have 40 candies. I need 125 for another Nidoking. Right here, squatted on the side of the road, hatching eggs. Let's see what else we got. Meowth, okay. Tentacool, yes. I have plenty of candies. I've just been waiting for one with better than 80% IVs. So hopefully that's it. Actually, I have 100 candies now. I can evolve two. Let's see. Spiro. Poliwag. Okay. That's good. Oh, I have the candies. I'm getting Polyrath tonight. What else do we have here? 
Holy wag. Okay, no wonder I had so many candies. Because I wasn't even at 100 yet. But now 120. That's two polywags. Okay. Three. Three polywags. No wonder I got so many candies. Ratata. Cool. You know, I'm actually probably going to evolve this one. Because Raticate is kind of a sleeper pick with Bite and Hyper Beam. It's not bad. Psyduck. We're getting closer to another Golduck. 32 candies. That's it. Not bad. I got enough candies for a Polyrath. I'm still hyped about that Snorlax. Awesome. I gotta check the IVs on that Tentacool too. Overall, not a bad batch. Back at the condo now, and I'm gonna check the IVs on all the Pokemon I just hatched, and the Snorlax. And to do that, I'm gonna show you a new app that a lot of you suggested to me yesterday. It's called Go IV. It's only on Android, and it's not available in the Play Store, but I'll put a link in the description. So the way it works is it uses an overlay on your screen to autofill all your information. So it's kind of like a combination of the Silph Road and Poke Assistant. So you enter your trainer level, hit start, and it'll open Pokemon Go. Once the game's open, you can go look at your Pokemon, and you'll see this little IV button down in the corner. That's Go IV, and that's its screen overlay. Hit IV, and it's going to autofill everything. You'll see there's a little red dot on the end of your CP bar. You can use the plus and minus buttons to move it if it's not perfectly lined up, but it'll autofill the Pokemon species, its CP, and its HP. Hit check IV, and it'll tell you all the possible combinations. So, this is a good Rattata. Above 80%. I'm going to give that a star, because that is going to become Eradicate. Uh, next Pokemon. Don't forget to use those UI shortcuts when you're scrolling through. Psyduck. Check IVs. Everything autofills. Everything's above 80%. That's another star. Nidoran. Definitely want to check this guy out. So sometimes when it autofills, it's not quite correct. It thought this was a Nidoran female. So you can just hit the name, pick the right name, and there you go. Max, 76%. Not great on this one. It's also not going to get the correct name if your Pokemon has a nickname. So if you have a nickname, you're going to have to manually choose the right name, the right species for that Pokemon. And Snorlax. Snorlax. I'm kind of nervous about this one. Let's see. That's not bad. It could be 80%. I'm going to throw this into Poke Assistant and refine it because I want to know for sure. But I'm really, really happy with this Snorlax. Even if it's not 80%. It has a pretty good moveset. And I might, I might power it up anyway. So that's it. That's Go IV. Super fast, super useful if you're on Android. Thank you to everyone who suggested that on yesterday's video. And that's it. This episode is over. As you probably know, sites like PokeAdvisor that give you exact IVs are being shut down by Niantic. There's still some working alternatives, but with the recent ban wave, I'm pretty cautious about using them. Niantic just released a statement saying that they're primarily going after hackers with the bans, but using these third-party sites that allow you to access the game's API still technically breach the terms of service, so that's why I'm not recommending using them right now. Unfortunately, without logging in with your Google or Pokemon Training Club account, it's impossible or very difficult to get exact IVs. Calculators like Poke Assistant or the Silk Roads tool will give you a range of possible IVs, but there are some things you can do to narrow it down.